Hi, I'm Zach Schamberg, the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association. Today, we're continuing our series of sharing the voices and the various perspectives of those closely connected to long-term care during the past year and the COVID-19 pandemic as we approach the one-year mark for when the World Health Organization officially declared COVID-19 to be a global pandemic. Today, I'm very honored to be joined by three guests. They are individuals across Pennsylvania who stepped up for the long-term care community as our workers and our residents stood in some of the darkest moments throughout this pandemic. Their support delivered protection to residents and workers and allowed our providers to continue caring for our most vulnerable population. Our long-term care community cannot thank them enough for championing these various efforts on our behalf. And with that, I'd like to introduce them to you. With me today is State Senator Judy Ward, who serves as the chairwoman of the Senate Aging and Youth Committee. She represents the 30th Senatorial District, and Senator Ward was the sponsor of Senate Bill 1268, which enabled the certification of COVID-19 temporary nurse aides in nursing homes. Next is Senator John Udicek, who serves as the vice chair of the Aging and Youth Committee and represents the 14th Senatorial District. Senator Udicek helped establish the Supply, Operate and Save, or SOS program, that has worked throughout the past few months to get much needed PPE to long-term care providers in Northeast Pennsylvania. And finally, Casey Shiro, who is a geospatial technician and a student at Harrisburg University. Casey is the son of the late Dr. Charles Shiro, who served as a lead professor of the Advanced Manufacturing Program at Harrisburg University. Together, along with Casey's mom and nephew, the family designed and manufactured more than 2,300 face shields, and they used 3D printers to do it just to support our healthcare heroes in long-term care. I wanna thank you all for being with us. And Casey, I actually wanna start with you today because we are very grateful for the work that your father initiated and carried through with you and your family. You were in our corner when we really needed someone here in Harrisburg. Ever since we established the partnership with you to get the face shields into the hands of our frontline workers, I followed along with the stories that have been published in local newspapers that have spotlighted your dad. And I was really touched by the fact that he admitted he was immunocompromised and he wanted to keep others healthy and safe so that they could be there when we need them. And I, I want to speak for our entire membership when I say the loss of your father was a loss for all of us. So I, I want to thank you and your family for sharing him with us and our workers. And I, I think the story of your dad and your family should continue to be told. So if you can, tell us about your dad's drive and this initiative to make face shields for frontline workers. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, dad had a compromised immune system, and as soon as word got out that COVID was, you know, very, very detrimental to anybody, well, anybody in general, but someone that does have a compromised immune system, like my dad and mom both do, and um, the concerns of, you know, if, if they were to get it, um, as dad said, if it, if it gets me, it's going to get me. And, um, he, you know, could have been some of his intuition, but, uh, he knew from the beginning, no matter what, uh, that he wanted to help the community. And he knew that all, you know, the hundreds of thousands of people are dying that if there's the ability to save even just a few people by supplying supplies that are shorthanded or not currently available to any community that needs it, that he wanted to ensure that we could do that. And so 
he ended up going through and um, found some 3D models online for uh, the face shield bands. And then um, we went through and basically created a little assembly line on the uh, 10th floor of the university. And um, we were going through and we tweaked the design a little bit because we found some weak points that wouldn't make it something that would be particularly too comfortable and it wouldn't be something that would last and we needed stuff to last. And um, so of course, you know, we did go through, made some alterations to it and then started our production runs of uh, the face shield bands and um, worked with y'all to go through and kind of figure out the lengths that the shields themselves needed to be to be comfortably worn daily mm -hmm. and um, basically the university was able to go through and offer uh you know supplies and efforts and stuff like that to ensure that we could continue to do this and produce the 2300 shields that we did so well, Casey, thank you. And again, I, I think that uh, certainly our members in this immediate area, in the Harrisburg area, owe you and your family a debt of gratitude because we hand delivered those face shields that you created. You know, I want to go to Senator Udicek next because we're talking about PPE and Senator, you supported long-term care and you've supported long-term care throughout the past few months, especially as it relates to personal protective equipment. I want to ask you with all the issues surrounding this pandemic for so many different industries and businesses and providers. Why did you choose to take up this fight to supply long-term care providers with PPE? Well, I, I chose to get into this fight because of the voices that you referenced earlier and the voices that I'm sure uh, Dr. Shiro, uh, who, by the way, uh, an inspiration, uh, Casey, your father's an inspiration. Uh, uh, he's part of the American pantheon of heroes who stepped up uh, and with private innovation, uh, uh, put himself uh, beneath the greater good uh, and, and, and drove private innovation for the public good uh, and was not concerned about his welfare, but the others. That's an inspiration. That's the definition of a hero. Those same voices that, that Dr. Shiro was hearing in Harrisburg, we were hearing here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, and they were nursing home administrators, nursing home uh, workers, uh, and, and families who had loved ones in these long-term care facilities. And what I heard in their voices was fear and absolute horror. They were not getting the PPE they needed to protect the frontline healthcare heroes, to protect the nursing home residents who we knew were the most vulnerable citizens in this pandemic. Nursing home residents, long-term care residents were the most vulnerable to this terrible virus. So we were able to partner, again, using public and private partnerships, private innovation, a company called uh, uh, OneSource here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, partnered up with All One Foundation, and we had folks that stepped up like the Earth Conservancy that put $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars on the table that we were able to match with the All One Foundation and then Luzerne County and Lackawanna County, their county commissioners and their county council stepped up and we were able to raise over a million dollars over a million dollars. And I'm proud to say that with your help and the help of so many others here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, we have surpassed the 2 million pieces of PPE, Mark. That's remarkable. It, since April, when we created it, once we recognized that we were not getting the help, whether it was from the federal or state government to drive out PPE, we created a private sector solution to partner with the public sector so that we can protect and save lives. And the Northeastern Pennsylvania SOS program run by the All One Foundation certainly has saved, there's no question, it's saved lives, it's helped protect the most vulnerable citizens in this pandemic, and that's our nursing home residents. Thanks, Senator. And and you did stand up and you were a strong advocate. And, and speaking of stepping up in the Senate and advocating, Senator Ward, I, I want to go to you. Now, we've talked about PPE, but there's been many other issues that have really come through this pandemic, especially related to long term care. You held various hearings throughout the last few months um, in the spring and summer of 2020. And one of the areas that we've expressed concern in is staffing. 
Now, you were the prime sponsor of Senate Bill 1268, which enabled temporary nurse aides to be qualified for the CNA registry. I wanted to ask you, why was staffing important to you? Why was this bill important to you? So staffing in your agency, in your facilities, has always historically been an issue. Um, but when you put the pandemic on top of that, it has made it even worse and much more challenging. Um, the feds had a proposal to allow temporary nurse aides to waive certain requirements and take an approved eight hour training class and pass a 50 question exam. And this it was produced to get a greater influx of workers, which eventually helped tremendously. Um, so we needed to make sure that those, those workers did not have to go back to stage one and, and test again and recertify and, and all those things. So um, we worked with, um, we got the bill passed. We've been working with the Pennsylvania Department of Education to um, get those, implement those regulations. And we've gotten word that very soon they will be coming out with the, the final um, piece of that so we can get people um, certified, keep them certified, and, and it will help your industry tremendously with you know staffing, which was a, a real problem. It's historically been a problem, but even more so with the pandemic. Um, and I, I just want to take a moment to shout out to Casey and to Senator Uducek. And when I listen to these stories, it tell it just inspires me so much. And it tells me that, you know, together, when we work together, we can get so much done. And um, I, I just want to hats off to both of you for all you've been doing. So and and let me go to back to Casey. Casey, I, I wanted to ask you, so Throughout the spring and summer of 2020, you and your dad, you printed, you assembled these face shields through weekends, through holidays. Did you realize at the time about the kind of impact that you were making during this unprecedented pandemic? And, and if you realize it now, as you look back, what does that mean to you? Um, at the time, honestly, like, it was just a civic duty and it was just something that dad has always kind of brought um all of his students as well as you know family up to you know you got to do your civic duty you have to take care of um you know your community whenever you can and yeah we were very uh excited to go through and be able to assist with this because this was going to be such a huge um like undertaking and we wanted to make sure that people would be safe and so yeah at the time it was just you know going in every morning and making sure all the stuff was printed and then producing the actual shield portions and assembling them and putting them up packing them up and um yeah it, now looking back at it and thinking that you know those shields that we produced were used by all the frontline employees and everything and it, it's it's an amazing thing to think that okay you know just by having that shield we might have been able to protect you know hundreds of people thousands of people from contracting this deadly virus so it, it's definitely a um very big uh you know it, it's it's a uh thanks casey yeah, and you know the 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 overall theme of of today's roundtable is really looking at champions, and and the three of you are champions. I think that as I look at long term care over the better part of the last decade, one of the things that workers and residents have so desperately needed are, are legislative champions. And Senator Ward, Senator Udichek, you both are are have, are certainly champions now, and you've been throughout the last year. Senator Udichek, I, I wanted to ask you, what drives you to be such an outspoken advocate 
for long-term care. You've been involved on the PPE front, but I, I see you and the industry sees you time and time again, coming out and expressing support for the vaccine rollout and other initiatives. What, what is the drive behind that to be such an outspoken long-term care advocate? Well, I, I have a, a godmother uh, that was living in a nursing home here in uh, uh, in Newport Township in Luzerne County. Uh, she was very dear to me. She was like a second mother to me. Unfortunately, we lost her, uh, not to COVID-19, uh, to other complications, uh, but she was married uh, uh, for uh, over 60 years. Uh, and, and, and those two people taught me everything I needed to know about how two people can love one another and, and go through this world and meet the challenges of this world. When the pandemic hit, uh, for her to be separated for her husband and from her loved ones, from her children uh, and grandchildren, and, and to suffer through uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and other issues that, that had to be devastating for her to lose that, that contact with loved ones, uh, that inspired me to get involved in long-term care issues, that we needed to make sure that there was proper staffing, proper resources, proper funding. We've not done a very good job of funding uh, our long-term care facilities in Pennsylvania, quite frankly. No mention this year of, of additional funding in Governor Wolf's budget, in his 2020 budget, last year, 2019, flat funding. You're losing ground. Uh, and in addition, the pandemic hits and, and you are left uh, with being under-resourced, understaffed, uh, and unprepared to meet this really once-in-a-generation challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I needed to step up personally uh, because of the personal connections, but also my role as a legislator. I needed to be an advocate. I needed to raise my voice. And Casey was struggling to find the right words there earlier uh, about what his father did as a private citizen and what we're trying to do in the legislature. And let me put it in this way, and I think these were the words he was grasping. It's a big freaking deal what Dr. Darrow did, Dr. Sharrow did. That's a big freaking deal to step up when people are hurting, when government's not getting it right, to build the collaborative partnerships. And that's the key word that I've learned throughout this pandemic, collaboration. We can put the private sector and the public sector together to get things right. Uh, Dr. Sherrill got it right. Senator Ward is doing a tremendous job on the Aging and Youth Committee. It's a wonderful partnership that we've been able to form. I kid her a little bit. I'm the aging portion of the committee. She's the youth portion of the committee. But it, it's about collaboration. And unfortunately, what we've seen from some government officials in the early part of this pandemic was unilateral action rather than collaborative action. Uh, Zach, you and your team at, at PHCA have been terrific. You need to be at the table when decisions are made about the long-term care industry. So making sure the right people in the room that have the right inspiration and the right heart to do the right thing. And that's that's why I've raised my voice and, and, and I'm just privileged to be a part of this coalition that you've built along with other uh, long-term care advocates in Pennsylvania. Let's go then next to that youth component of that committee and, and Senator Ward. So when we're talking about collaboration and we're talking about moving forward, you know, one of the things that we want to do this week as an association, as we look back, we have to look forward and we have to look at what's ahead and how we can better support our most vulnerable seniors. In your position as chair of the Senate Aging and Youth Committee, have you begun to look forward? And what do you hope to address after what you've learned throughout the past year? Well, we've, we've learned a lot. And I, I think some of your highlighting here, you know, this collaboration and, and Zach, you've been a big part of that. Um, and, and just being able to work as a team. And I think, you know, there's strength in numbers and you can get so much done. And that's one of the things I've learned but looking forward, we have got to get all of our long-term care residents vaccinated, number one. Number two, we have to get our senior, the rest of our senior population vaccinated. That's number two. Um, and we have to be able to get, um, my mom is 98 years old and she's in a long-term care facility. And it is, it is so painful that I haven't been able to hug her and get my arms around her in a whole year. 
and she misses that too. And I know I speak for other families because they call and they cry because they can't see their relatives and their family. They can't hug them. They can't get into the facilities. Um, and, and many of our seniors have difficulty maybe with orientation, um, maybe it's vision, maybe it's hearing impairments. And so it makes all of this even more difficult. So we have to get our seniors vaccinated, our long-term care residents vaccinated. And we have to begin to have open these facilities up and have life again. I mean, when I when I look at my mother, you know, 98 years old, time is not on her side. But we we have to be able to somehow give them quality of life again, and whatever that means. But um, I'm just, we need to look into. Um, I think that's got to be our priority um, in the short term. And then in looking, actually, it, we've talked about this. I know Senator Udichak and Zach. We talked about this, you know, some of our failings and in, in what happened early on in this pandemic. Um, how do we not repeat those, those failures? And moving forward, we have to make sure that our elderly population and our older individuals are treated with respect, dignity, and as a priority. So that's my goal moving forward with the committee. Um, and I, you know, things are coming together. We, we've got a great collaboration and I know we can do that, but it's a lot of it's advocacy and just making sure, and Zach, your organization has been great about letting us know what the needs were and early on, we're not getting PPE, you know, we're not getting testing supplies and we were able to push for that. And, you know, eventually it did happen, but it's, it's we've got, we want to be the advocate for you all. And I think I can speak for Senator Udichak and, and we're gonna we're gonna push and we're gonna make sure you get what you need and our older citizens um, get what they need. So thanks. Thank you, Senator. And I, I just have to say as as the grandson um, of a long-term care resident with dementia in a personal care home, I, I know exactly how you feel. And that drives everything that I do here, I know it drives what you do in your daily life and, and in the state Senate, so thank you. Um, I, I know we have time for one more question for each of you, and I, I, wanna, I wanna do this. Casey, I wanna start with you. Um, I don't know if you've had the chance to speak directly to a frontline worker. My guess is you haven't, as you've made these face shields. So this is the opportunity to say to them or, or give them a message. What message would you want to share with them after the past year and, and the undertake or the, the initiative that your family took on early last year? Um, I, I hope that um, that they've been able to get their everything that they've needed and that they continue to keep doing their best because you know this fight isn't over yet and um i know i know that i i want everybody to be as safe as possible and to be able to continue to assist um their their jobs are crazy right now and i know that it's it's a lot going on tasking wise and just it, it's a I, I know it's a constant I have, I have multiple friends that are very close to me that are nurses and ERs and COVID wards and um, long care facilities too um, that you know they're they're overwhelmed and they're they're doing an amazing job though I know that they're going in there every day kind of putting their life on the line with code itself but then you know and everything else they're having to deal with and i'm just i'm very happy that we could assist them and that i know that if 
we could have done more quicker and gotten more stuff out, we would have done our best. And that's what we did. We tried to do our best to ensure that everybody was healthy and continue to prosper so that, you know, we could help them help everybody else. Thanks, Casey. Senator Udichek, I'll ask you a similar question. You've been so involved throughout the past year, especially as it relates to the PP initiative. And I don't know if you've had the chance to look the administrators and the frontline workers uh, in the eyes as, as they've accepted the PPE or they've received the PPE. What would you say to them today? Well, first, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by their gratitude. I have spoken to many of them and, and, and been able to discuss uh, the, the Northeastern Pennsylvania uh, Nursing Home SOS program with them and what it's meant to them and their families, uh, protecting the nursing home residents, but also protecting the workers and their family. One family, dear friends of mine, uh, a worker who contracted uh, COVID and then her husband and, and then her son, uh, and it spread through their whole family. So what I have expressed to them, uh, we are a family. We're in this together. You're not alone in this battle. You're not alone in the fight. And there have been dark days where they really have felt uh, isolated uh, and when they shut down uh, these long-term care facilities. Uh, no visitors, uh, no outside uh, assistance. Uh, they felt alone. Uh, I want to make sure that they understand they're not alone. We're in this fight together. We're going to stand shoulder to shoulder with those healthcare heroes uh, until the end of this pandemic, until we uh, defeat COVID-19. And, and we can make sure that these workers, these residents, uh, and these wonderful long-term care facilities uh, are safe places for the families that depend on them. Again, as in your position as the chair of the, the Senate Aging and Youth Committee, um, what is your message to the people of Pennsylvania as we try to move past this pandemic, um, but hopefully we address the challenges that exist in long-term care? What is, what's your message to Pennsylvania, and especially those family members who maybe share the same frustrations and, and fear that you have? Just that, just that we're gonna move forward. And hopefully, you know, if COVID has taught us anything, it, it showed us some of our, our vulnerabilities. And so if we can work together as a team, like we have a, a great partnership to see where those vulnerabilities are and fill those slots to make it safer for our residents of Pennsylvania, our long-term care facilities, most especially, um, and, and move forward. And my message to the workers would be, thank you, because uh, honestly, I believe they're doing God's work. And I, I wanna thank them from the bottom of my heart. It is just every day I thank God for them because uh, I don't know where we'd be without their dedication, without their commitment to our seniors. And I know um, my, you know, my mother, I'm certain doesn't tell them thank you, but I know she appreciates, you know, the good work that they do and they, they've kept her safe and I'm, I'm forever grateful. So thank you. And thank you to your organization for, for what they do and, and for bringing some of these issues forward to legislators that we can work on them collectively and, and move forward and make it a better, stronger Pennsylvania. So thank you. Thank you, Senator. And again, I, I really wanna thank each of you for taking the time to join us and for championing these efforts to protect our most vulnerable in long-term care in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic throughout the past year. As I said before, it's our hope that as we look back this year or this week at this year, we can learn and we can prepare and we can be ready for what's next. So thank you for watching. I'm Zach Schamberg. And on behalf of the P Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, we hope you'll join us next time.